boys! Today, uh, we have a Hellcat Charger. Uh, we're gonna be doing limo on this crazy uh, monster of a vehicle right here. Um, funny thing is, I didn't know what a red, cat, red eye was, but it just means it's more Hellcat. So, we're getting things set up here real quick. Two seconds, I streamed to the wrong place. Of course I did. Um, well, now that is working fine. Headphones seem to be working too. Yeah, I streamed to the wrong event, which uh, actually really matters, so. <laughs> now you guys have a, a better idea what we're doing here. So, uh, like I said, we're doing 5% all the way around, except for 35% on the windshield. I was waiting for, to see if, uh, if this event needed to be deleted or something. Oh, there it is, yep. That's right, because it's got the wrong thumbnail on it. Okay, so because we got a lot of work, we're just gonna be jumping into it, but before we do, um, question that I get a lot is, uh, how much soap do you use? And uh, so there's a couple that we use. <laughs> Starting it out big time. <laughs> Daniel Reyna with a 10. Thank you, sir. Daniel Reyna super chatted $9.99. Must have great and mighty master Matt. I just realized how much purple and blue there is. <laughs> Thank you so much for the 10. Uh, I appreciate that a lot. Okay, so real quick, we're gonna jump into how much soap we use. So these are the two uh, that I use. This is Dawn, uh, this is Baby Shampoo uh, by Johnson & Johnson. Um, and this is a, uh, a measuring cup. I've never ever used a measuring cup for my own soap. Um, so what I do is real, real easy here. So I. I really just guesstimate. I don't know an exact amount, which is why I got a measuring cup. So I have my spray keg down here. It's filled with about two thirds, two thirds full of water, which it's a three gallon keg. Um, and then, so we're just pretty much going to, probably about, that feels about right. Somewhere in the range of like three ounces of baby shampoo. And then we give it a good like, good dose of so we're, we're close, we're close to about four, maybe a little bit, that might be just a little bit much, but that's kind of where we're at right now, is we are at, um, we're at about half an ounce to a full ounce of Dawn, and then about three ounces of baby shampoo. So if you ever wanted to know, then we take it, take it in this guy, pour it in, and then we can throw the whole thing in there for good measure, and then mix it around. And then, Let's pop this guy on here. You can see first person what we're doing. GoPro. Oh, there's always something. There's always something. There we go. Let that warm up. Um, so here's the tank. Then we take the lid. We're gonna shoot something better. Today's a little scattered today, but Shake this guy up, bring it over here. Then I have my air compressor. Uh, it's pre-programmed to go to 65. So press that button. It's noisy. There, that'll be better. I gotta mount it on the wall, I just haven't yet. So we're gonna let that chill for a sec. And then uh, we'll get started. Is there a concern that Dawn will ruin the adhesive? Um, I've never had it happen. Um, I know quite a few people that have used Dawn for quite a long time. So it's one of those things that is just, I don't know, it's very recommended. So it's done really well for me. We've been using it for, I don't know, over a year now. Oh 
Okay, so somewhere in here we got the key. Oh yeah, we got the key right here. Can you go over the dot matrix today? How so? Da, da, da. So we can turn that off for a sec. We got a lot of prep work to do on this one because there is some stitching. There's some stitching on these panels that we do not want to get wet. These are the type that'll swell on you for sure. John is a dish soap. I know it is. And baby shampoo is a baby shampoo. Um, a lot of tin toys. Can you go over the dot? Uh, for the dot matrix, I'm not sure what you mean. I never have gone through your prior videos and you never have any issues with the small trimmer on the windows? Oh, well, so part of it is going to be letting it dry. So if you don't see silvering, it's just fresh. Anytime, anytime I tin it, there's water in between. Anytime there's uh, water in between those dots, then it's gonna look like there's, like it, it's completely tinted, right? But once it dries out, it'll dry out mostly uniform something we don't have complete control over. They're just raised, so don't let it don't let it get to you too much. That's just kind of how it is. Listening while analyzing financials <laughs> would rather be tempting. Numbers doesn't sound super fun. Not unless it's businessy numbers, I guess. So the silver trim is normal? Yes, yes it is. Unfortunately, I wish there was a, a, I had a better answer for you. Um, but tint is, uh, the, the, the glue on it's not very thick. So best you can do is either sand it down or dry it out and press it down. But even then, like, there's just super impractical places to get to, it's just not going to happen. So stuff more towards like the top area of the window would be easier to get to and dry out and try and make it look better. But all the water is settling towards the bottom and that is super difficult to try and knock down. Steel wool? I, I don't like steel wool. I've never liked steel wool. Steel wool is, uh, it leaves lots of little bits behind. So while a lot of guys use it, I'd recommend scrub pads over steel wool. I don't get the whole steel wool thing. It's an abrasive, but so are scrub pads. So this stitching right here, I want to cover that. I really... There we go. I want to make sure this type of stitching is covered up. Um, so we're doing that a few ways. One, we got the tape up here that the plastic can cling to, and then we're putting another barrier in here in case there's any little drips that'll get through. Don't want to get that stitching wet. Thanks for the camera recommendation. Canon 90D looks worlds better than my old Lumix. Oh, that's cool. The, uh, <laughs> yeah, I got the Canon SL2, uh, which is a pretty budget Canon. Um, and then I put a, like a $600 lens on it. That lens is so much better. There it is. Sergio.
Sergio Garcia super chatted $5, always super helpful. You my boy EI. <laughs> Thank you, Sergio. Thank you for the five. You my boy. No, you're my boy. Appreciate it. What happens when it gets wet? Um, there is a good chance on a material like this. I've seen it on the rams. Um, where when the stitching gets wet, sometimes the material underneath it gets, I mean, it's holes in the, in the paneling. So the material underneath it starts to get wet. Um, and then it swells. So you don't want it to swell. Because then you have a swell of a doy panel. Looks really bad, like getting leather wet or something like that. So, trying to block that off as much as we can uh, before we get going too far on this. Same thing with the side seals. We tape those off. These have felt a little bit more necessary. What's your opinion on this color? <laughs> the name is amazing. It's cool. Uh, the, the color name, it's just, it's funny how this gets brought up. Uh, the color name is Hellraisin. So their, uh, their naming department is just is on point. Yeah, this is cool. This thing just looks mean. It's what I like about the whole, uh, the whole Dodge lineup, man. They're just like, they went full out on like Hellcat. And it just, it didn't matter. It was like the, the question for them is like, okay, how much more horsepower can we do? <laughs> we can do more? Okay, then just keep doing more. Well, just don't stop. It's just, okay, we did this much in a, in a normal car. Let's, let's just keep going, just keep going. <laughs> There we go. So we are, I'd say, pretty thoroughly <laughs> taped up there. Then let's uh, turn this back on and get to cutting. What was it? Just bought a gas stand and scooter. Any experience with Tint Tech? Uh, yeah, Tint Tech I do have experience with. It was... It was one of the better softwares that was publicly <laughs> available to like anybody. Um, but it let me down plenty of times. Like, I mean, we just, like all of them, I guess, you just get used to the problems and that's what annoys me the most is I don't wanna get used to the problems with it. Currently scanning my hand cut panners into Vinyl Express. Nice. You got a large format printer and you're just going to do it yourself. I don't blame you. So Tint Tech, um, yeah, they're like, if you're okay with mediocre and constantly adjusting patterns, that's, that's why I said it was like one of the better ones because some of it was like good enough, um, but it was never like, it's, it's never the same as hand cutting it. I just realized we didn't do this one. Skip right over it. So much tape. Yeah, we're gonna set up a plotter. Uh, pretty sure we're gonna do it live. I don't. I don't see any other way to do it. Cause. Uh, there's going to be a, if I make a video on a plotter, which I, which I guarantee you we're going to make some videos on it, but there's going to be so many little things that we just don't know right out of the box that we kind of figure out as we go. Um, so we're definitely going to set it up. What type? He's going with the standard. 
We did carbon on the last one. We're doing standard on this one. Sad face. But it'll still look good. <laughs> Okay, so now what do we need? Oh, we need film. I totally forgot to get the film. So that right there. Let me, let me grab this stuff. Five. Oh wait, do we have it over there? I always forget this. I think we got our long rolls over here. Because we got five. Oh, the only thing we don't have is 35. So we have 20 right here, 20 and five underneath it. So that's where we put our standard. This guy, this guy right here, this is five. Questions on tint tech. Yeah, we talked about it a little bit. Um do you use, t oh, do you use Tint Whiz? Oh my God, I thought you were asking about Tint Tech. I was like, we just talked about it. Yes, we used, uh, we, we use Tint Whiz. Can you talk about how it works? Like if someone has a website, could they schedule a link to it? So the, the website integration is gonna be just through a lead generator. That part's not super fancy, but it is helpful. So basically, you create a window. You can go to DetroitTintStudio.com and request a quote. And the fields where they put their info in to request the quote, that automatically dumps them into TintWiz. And then from there, that's where it's a little bit more magical. So from TintWiz, then you can start sending them proposals. You have them in your software. Um, you, so you get a lot of good analytics from stuff like that. And you know where they, like, you can set up multiple lead generators so you can kind of like put them in different avenues. So one can be from your website, one can be uh, from like, you know, social media, you could set them up from like Facebook, Instagram, um, just like links all over the place so you kind of know where people are clicking to go to it. But the magic for me is more in the, uh, in the proposals feature. Proposals features far outweigh the rest of it. Makes you look clean and tidy and it's efficient. Do you think you'll stream on the 11th? I don't understand, what's? Like, oh, because it's September 11th? Uh, if we have a car, yeah. We don't have a special memorial plan, though. <laughs> um, he's getting five? Yes. Where is, do I put another knife somewhere? I'm a little scattered. I had a pretty simple job this morning, and then I had to redo the windshield, which really kind of threw me off. It's just one of those days where, like, it was from the, uh, from the soak rope on that, uh, on that all-in-one towel, it just pressed in on the corner and it ended up just putting, like I put a small crease in that bottom corner and I just couldn't work it out. I spent like probably 10 minutes just warming it up and trying to smooth it out and it wasn't happening. <laughs> I'm excited to see that back window. Oh boy. We've done quite a few. Daniel Rayner super shattered $4.99. Daniel with the five, thank you. What is going on? What is going on with. Did I not open it? Is that it? It's being. Oh, I didn't open it. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. <sighs> Today's an interesting day, I tell you. Daniel! <laughs> Thank you, sir. Oh man, I just, I don't know. 
I don't even know if I should have gone live with this one. We'll, we'll be okay. Sometimes you get that groove, and then sometimes you just... You gotta get it back a little bit. So this car's gonna be a hard reset for me. We'll, we'll see how this goes. So this, uh, this back window, we've, we've talked about these and these types of defrosters a lot. And we've also have dedicated videos to shrinking a car like this and this car in particular. So we've answered a lot of the questions already one way or another, but we will definitely go through it today. Hey, they work now. Rodney Rodriguez super chatted one dollar and ninety nine cents. <laughs> Rodney, Rodney with a super sticker. Thank you. Pixelated hippo chomps on a one up. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate it. How much? Oh, people are asking how much. Uh, this one is 370. So this is falls in the standard pricing, which um, I don't know. We might. We're probably gonna do something about the standard. So it'll still be around for a little bit, but we did get some Apex in. So I still gotta figure out what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna, we're, I don't know. I gotta figure out what we're gonna be charging for it. Have you considered discontinuing carbon? No, not at all. I don't think so. I like the carbon, I don't wanna discontinue it. I'm not sure about the lineup exactly though. Cause I like the color stable and that's like a, that was a good amount of what I installed for quite a long time. Now we've been doing so much more carbon and ceramic that I think we're at the point where we could. Um, especially when we, when we have a super ceramic to pick from too. So Apex is GeoShield's new 95% heat reduction ceramic. So the way that it goes is with a color stable, you don't get hardly any heat reduction other than what the shade kind of naturally provides, but it really doesn't do, it doesn't block out the heat spectrum. So you'll get like sunlight get absorbed into the 5% and it will feel more comfortable for that because it blocks out a ton of glare. But it's not gonna be the same as doing a carbon, um, a ceramic or the super ceramic. So with the, uh, with the carbon, you get about 50% heat rejection. With the, there we go. Uh, with the ceramic, with their Pro Nano ceramic, you get, what is it, 75? And now with their Apex, you get a 95% heat, re heat reduction. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't cannibalize my, my carbon out of this. My, I think my biggest question is, do I want to keep all four or discontinue my entry and push and just m primarily focus on carbon and ceramic jobs entirely? I think that's probably the route that I want to go. Um, when you're working as a mobile company, as a contractor, were you responsible for damage? Absolutely. 
it sucks. But you're the guy that's doing the work. Um, sometimes you can work things out with the shop where they'll take some of it. <laughs> Good lord. Thank you for that, by the way. Daniel Rayner super chatted $4.99. Since you are an international renowned tinter, can we buy an autographed poster with Tint Studio insignia? To post in shop. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'd, I'd have to get them made. Maybe. Also, that's really weird for me because I don't, I don't even know what do we do about that. Maybe like, maybe we could do, I think, I feel like tint tools would be a better route. Sign, just like, if you want me to sign tint tools from like an order or something, that is something that probably could be done. Poster would be a little bit tougher. Thank you for the five. Uh, I only use Carbon and Pro Nano. Dropped the die a while back. Nice, very nice. Is Apex by Geo or a different brand? Uh, it's by Geo. So it's kind of like, how do I just say it? It's kind of like merch. You know, everybody starts, every YouTuber starts doing merch because they don't know what else to do. And the thing is, with, uh, I had like, YouTube gives you like a merch shelf where you can do like hoodies and stuff like that. Um, they never did hardly anything. They just sat there. So I feel like if I got a, Small run of posters, for the most part, they just sit there. <laughs> you guys like tools more than anything else, so. We have some Detroit Tint Studio themed ones, so maybe I could have an option to do, to do something like that. I don't think I'd charge for it, though. Maybe if it got overwhelming, but eh, it's all good. There you go. Hoorah. I mean, we have we have quite a few subscribers, but like, let's be real here. We're still tenders. <laughs> uh, well, I guess we got to prep the back window and the uh and the windshield too. Does your film move when you try and make small cuts? Like the whole pattern, does that move? It can. So if it starts to move, just tack it down a little bit, if it's annoying you. Sometimes cuts, like that's why I like 30 degrees too for the edges. They cut a little bit better than the 60s. So if you're really trying to shave like a sliver of the tint off, a Higher degree angle is going to do a better job. Just works better. I buy your screen squeegee with an autograph. That would be cool. <laughs> I appreciate it. If I remember, I'll look into doing it after. I, I want it to be just a little checkbox. But we're gonna be, oh man, it's something I should have done, but I haven't, like, it's something that I should have had an option for beforehand, rather than coming into uh, Glass Aid. So we have a shipment, I gotta double check. Should be here tomorrow. Then I gotta like, <sighs> I gotta forward a bunch of it to distributors and I gotta then quickly run out of my own store. I 
the standard film cheaper? Yeah. Yeah, so there's just levels. There's grades to film. So there's different... Basically, like, there's, like, three... Three main types of film. Dyed, carbon, and ceramic. Dyed's going to be uh, the cheapest out of them. Still get good looks, though. Good looks, 99% UV. Or a shorty handle with the tint studio insignia. <laughs> would be cool. Um, I'm sure that mold would be incredibly expensive to make. Fusion, fusion molds are, are very expensive. I know that much. I don't know how much they are, but I know they're... They've talked about them with some of their other tools before. So, like... What was it? One of their small handled ones? Uh, or... What is it? I'm trying to think of what it was. I don't know. One of, the, one of their handles. They made a small change on the mold. Molds are like, I don't know, 30,000. Maybe they were exaggerating, but that's kind of the rough estimate on, on what that was. <laughs> Be a lot. I pay for the handle. I appreciate that. So that's why we have like, it's it's a little bit easier to do like some of the special edition, actually it's a lot, a lot easier to do some of the special edition tools that we've done. So things that we use regularly, like like the shanks, right? Now they're green. Um, the felt cards, now they have Detroit Tint Studio. Like little things like that I can do. But a full mold redesign is, uh, it's a little out of the question. <laughs> um, what percentage for the windshield? Uh, we're doing 35. We're not doing full limo on it. Title's a little clickbaity in that. Hardest part about tint business, coming up with the name. That was a... Uh, that is a significant problem. Um, there's two ways to go about it, too. So when you're coming up with a name, uh, you can either go broad or you can go cool. And I would recommend to go uh, broad when you're starting. Because, like, uh, I mean, it, both can work. Both can work really well. But in, in the very beginning, you're trying to get discovered. The more discoverable you are, the easier people can find you. If somebody's got to go to, I know there's a whole bunch of these, but like Eclipse Window Tinning. Eclipse Window Tinning doesn't say anything about where you are. It just says you're Eclipse Window Tinning. So Eclipse, cool, Window Tinning, okay, I have no idea where you are. So a lot, a lot of smart businesses would do um, just kind of like their local city. And that's not near as cool. But it is very searchable. So you, it's just what people are already looking for. And then you're the one that pops up. And then you have an advantage. But as you grow your business then that's where, like, once you get past that hump, then the name doesn't matter as much because people know you as whatever your business name is. So we went Detroit Tint Studio because, one, the YouTube channel, and two, it was the, uh, it was the most, it was the closest major city that people could recognize. So I didn't really want to put Detroit in the name. <laughs> but it's easily more recognizable than Sterling Heights. So those are those are definitely little things to think of. Same thing with like making videos and ads and whatever. 
you want to hit a certain range of keywords that you know is going to be most relevant to what people are looking for. And also a little bit, a little broad if you can too, because then just more people are going to hit your business. Where's the best place to go to get tint tools? I have a couple of them for you. Uh, there is uh, sundistributingdirect.com and uh, Tint Depot. Tintdepot.com. Both of them you can get uh, anything and everything that I use on the channel. You can find there. Except, you know, except for the green shanks. You can't find the green shanks there. Or the Tint Studio felt cards. So there's also mytintstuff.com. That's my own little store. Beautiful work. Thank you. What squeegee would you recommend? Uh, my two favorites uh, are probably the Blue Max and the uh, the Hybrid, Hybrid by Fusion. But then there's like there's a bunch of other ones in there. Like all the Fusion squeegees have their strong points, so they're kind of like my favorite ones to go with. We've just play been playing around with the Blue Max here for a minute, but if you look here, I have the Hybrid too. So I swap back and forth between them very regularly. Supers. Super chat, thank you. Thinking about NJ Tint Studio. Daniel Rayner super chatted $4.99. Where do you get the green shank? <laughs> I'm waiting Rodney for the other Rodriguez one. Rodriguez super chatted one dollar and ninety nine cents. I have been thinking of Nshtint Studio opinion. Okay, first up, uh, thank you to uh, Rodney with the two. I have been thinking about NJ Tint Studio opinions. Um, it's pretty good. The NJ, I'm assuming that means New Jersey. So if that's the way that people search New Jersey, then absolutely. That is the, the only question that I have for you. Because outside of there, I mean, that's what comes to mind. I'm just not positive, but I'm not in your area. And then the other super chat. Just make sure that's tucked in. Uh, Daniel with the five, where can we get the green shanks? Uh, these are on, hang on. I think I gotta click this for it to work because the other ones should have done it. Uh, tint stuff. There it is. Mytintstuff.com. That's where you can find these. Look at it. Look at how, God, it's so freaking bright. But the other stores, I want to make sure they get a shout out too. Tint Depot. Um, Sun Distributing. Yeah, those two places. Those are recommendation links, by the way, too. So if you click on those, you'll get a list of, of everything that I'm using, so I don't have to sit here and try and explain it all. So if you're like, oh, sh I missed, what is that? What squeegee blade? What? I have the boring white shanks. Boring! <laughs> Got the three green shanks and a felt card. Love it. Glad to hear it. That stuff all, all was born out of uh, everything that I've been trying to do here. It's like, you know, I, I was tired of using yellow shanks. And I'm like, I want to make these look like my studio. Same thing. Like, it started with that squeegee. I saw that, like, that squeegee came out. And then I got a Detroit Tint Studio Edition one. 
And that was just sweet that I could do that. And then from there, it's like, okay, well, how many other things can we start playing around with? Yeah. Sweet. See, that double tape barrier kept that dry. I'm gonna use the felt card. I've been using the hard cards, wanna give it a try. They're gonna be, yeah, they're, they're fun. Uh, they're, some people still prefer to use the hard cards. Um, so, I, I don't know. I, I like how hard the hard card press is. My problem is, is every once in a while I would rip through the film with a hard card when I was like just kind of speeding along or something. There was like, what is it called, a slim foot? Slim foot with the, uh, with like a felt strip on it. That's another really good option. See, that's, this is why it's on distributing. I really like uh, what they do. Because there's just those little things that you wouldn't think of. And I don't know if they sell one with a felt strip, but they put a felt strip on one before. And it was one of the best shrinking tools that I've ever used. It was a little bit wider. It had a nice hard edge to it, but it, it had that felt so it would skip over dirt. It was a really, really good, good combo. <laughs> Super chip. Jamie G super chatted $5. What was funny I ordered 10 yellow shanks then bought 3 green shanks and tint studio felt card. <laughs> Thank you so much for the super. Uh, that means a lot. I'm glad that you like them. I mean it was one of those things. Like I saw them and I was like, oh man. I, I Those are the ones that I would buy. They look so cool. And... They're not functionally different, but it's just one of those neat little aesthetic things that you can get. So if you're in the market for them or you've already bought the other ones. <laughs> I appreciate the order, man. Is the hybrid a mix between the two? The hybrid, yeah, it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a mix between like a Blue Max and an Orange Crush. Although like Fusion doesn't make the, the Blue Max, but that's kind of like the idea there. But it's got a really, it doesn't feel like a Blue Max. It's, it's got this real, it's a, it's a really smooth, soft feel to it. Um, Best I can describe it is a lot. I think the fusion squeegees are injection molded, and like ones like the Blue Max are extruded. So you can do that with different materials, I know, but it, it's just the feel of them is is very distinct. Where can I purchase the Saran <laughs> Carpet Shield? That you can find at Lowe's or Home Depot or Amazon. All right, so one thing that drives me a little crazy is that right there. Sometimes when you slide the film a little too far into the seal, it'll pick a point somewhere in here, just that point, and it'll grab. And you gotta try and like shift it out of there or else your film is pretty much locked in place in the wrong spot.
when did you start tinning? I'm trying to remember. Uh, it was 2008? I think it was 2008. I don't 100% remember exactly when, because I was working as like a detailer in the summertime at my dad's auto accessories company. And then the window tinner quit. So like I had some experience doing, like getting into uh, bolt-on stuff, uh, auto glass, remote starters, and random other accessories. So it's like, you know, they'd have me pull some door panels, I'd pull some windshields, slowly learn how to like shoot the urethane. Um, was learning wiring diagrams for remote starters and stuff like that, and then the window tinner quit. And then they asked if I wanted to learn how to do that, since apparently nobody else wanted to. And, uh, and they felt I was a good pick for the job because, I don't know, I showed up. <laughs> I just showed up and the, the odds of me skipping out was pretty slim because I uh, <laughs> related to the owner of the company. So, you know, it <laughs> seems like a pretty safe bet to train for the long term. And, uh, and so he brought in his business partner's son, who happened to know how to tint. We were around the same age. So he spent a summer pretty much. I would follow him around, learn how to tint, butcher some of his work. He would fix it. Eventually, I'd get better. The rest is, the rest is history. Do you ever get old cars? Yeah. Yeah, here and there. Not as much, though. Um, I just price things a little bit differently here. So I have a lot more control over how that goes now. Where years ago, it was kind of just whatever was on the schedule was, that's what's getting done today. But generally, I... I don't know. I don't take on, I don't get a lot of requests for like old classic cars, but I'm starting to get a handful now. Um, and I'm just a little selective of, of that type of stuff. I just wanna know that if they bring it in for a day, we're, I'm gonna be able to deliver on what I gotta charge to do it because I do have to set aside basically an entire day to do it. Super chat. Give it a sec. There it is. Rodney Rodriguez super chatted one dollar and ninety nine cents. My tint solution every time I squeegee it move shelp. Rodney Rodriguez with the two. Thank you. Every time. Every time I squeegee, my tint solution, every time I squeegee, it moves. Help. Use less. Uh, what film are you using? That'll kind of help me to gauge it. If you're using the same thing as me, then I always suggest being stronger on your soap. Uh, if you're using something different, there's a lot of films that slide really easily, so you don't have to use as much soap as me. <laughs> Dan Orena just ordered them green puppies. Thank you, man. If you like the yellow ones, you'll like the green ones. You'll like the green ones more because they're very green. <sighs> Lexin? Oh, you probably don't need as much soap for that. Also, why you, why you gotta be using Lexin? <laughs> Yeah, just use less. 
So ideally where you want your slip solution is you want it to slide around some, but then when you squeegee it down, it'll, it'll stop sliding around. And yeah, like some people said, uh, use small strokes in the very middle areas that are easy to get to. And then, then once it starts to tack up a little bit, you can be harder with it. Like you'll see even with these quarter windows, I do it on it. I do that on every window. Is Lexan a good brand? It's a very budget brand. There's uh, there's some issues there. But if you're just learning, um, that's fine. So it's, it's a little bit harder of a film to to learn with. I'm practicing with Lexan. If that goes well, I'm going to order Geo. Oh, I hear you. You'll have a harder time shrinking with that film. film. Some films on Tint Depot are going to be much easier. The thing about Lexan is they have like all budget carbon and ceramics. So their budget carbon films are shrink like a dog. They're just, they're not, not super user friendly. Okay, so that right there, that's what we did. So we slid it in place. We put our hand to create a little bit of a counter action here. So swipe this way, pull this way just a little bit. And then once I get that tacked in place, I can start going a little bit harder on it. Because there's a lot of times for me too, first squeegee stroke on a window, it'll start shifting around a little bit. That's nice so you can line it up a little bit more, but then you need it to tack down pretty quick where it's not gonna keep sliding on you. If it's just sliding around a bunch, you got way too much soap. Just back up how much soap that you use. Is Lexan's carbon hazy like the Black Magic? That's, ex yeah. But not, I don't think it's, it's not near as, it's not as bad, but that's the problem with all of them. They'll have haze to some degree. So when you stay in that budget range, that's where, that's where it really sucks. That's why I really like that video too. Thank you for asking that. Is like, I talk about haze, but like, okay, let's see an actual real world example of haze. And it's like, oh, that's what he means. Yeah, that. And there's varying degrees of that. Some are okay, as in like, you know, not as noticeable, but I aim for something right out of the gate that just, it's not even, it's not even a question. It's just, it's a good looking film period because the amount dudes let me tell you the amount the amount that that you can nickel and dime isn't isn't worth it it's just not pay a little bit more get a better film it's like <laughs> sometimes the difference like okay i don't really talk about pricing very much but i'm going to break down at least a rough pricing for something like this. The difference in material cost on everything without the windshield is going to be like 20 bucks. You're essentially paying double for a roll. You get about eight cars off that roll. So with Lexan, you pay a hundred bucks for a roll. Cool. Geo, you pay about 200. That's going to be Pro Classic, that's going to be in like a 36. It's around there. I think it's a little bit more than that. I usually don't talk pricing, but we'll talk about the low end versus the low end. So now, if your cost is like 40 bucks or less with Geo, and it's like 20 or less with Lexan, like, come on. What are you doing? That's why I don't get it. I don't, I don't get running my business off of something like that. It's negligible.
that's for the people that watch this stream. So if you ever like wonder why I really think that way, that's why. It's negligible. <sighs> Lexan has a higher ceramic price and has no haze, almost like 3M IR ceramic. There's uh, the thing is with any of those films, any of those brands, there's always this big question mark. Is it really going to deliver? And am I, am I really not going to have problems long term? That's, that's a, just a, a shop, a shop risk I, I'm not looking to take. So stop hating on it. If you want to save the extra 20 bucks for it, go ahead. I just, that's not me as a company. So there you go. I mean, they sell a lot of film. There's a reason for that. There's also more than just raw film costs. Super chat. Devon mistakes super chatted $4.99. Is black magic harder to work with than most films? I have been using to practice with since it's cheap. Is <laughs> thank you for the super chat. Um I don't remember. So I just played with their ceramic. I would definitely not get their ceramic. But as far as all the other films go, um I'd have to go watch my older video. We did install some of the film, what is it, did we use? But we tinted, really all I have experience with is tinting like one window, one door window, or like a back window in a silly way. So from what I remember, it was like, it was a little weird. I don't think it felt as good. I think the liner uh, pulled away a little more difficult, but overall it was, uh, it was okay. So if that's what you've been using the practice with, um, that's more okay as long as it was in like the dyed range. I, I just, I harp on carbon and ceramic because those aren't user friendly. Isaac Nichols super chatted $2. How much um, does 20 by 100 cover for a normal sedan? Oh, trying to remember. Thank you for the super. Um, it's math. I did the math on this before. I think you can get 16 sets of doors. So like what, on one window, you're generally using about, about three feet. So you're using, you're using about like two and a half, three feet worth of film per door, right? That sounds right. No, not two, yeah, no, about three. Three a little bit more per door and just divide that by 100. You'll figure that out. I think it was in the range of like, you get about 16, 16, 14 to 16 sets of doors out of that, which was pretty great. Or is that way wrong? Am I way wrong on that? 16 doors? I'm right in the middle of this. I hate math. I'm really bad at math. Just full disclaimer. <laughs> like, I gotta sit there for a little bit. There's, there's a few things I'm just not very good at. One, uh, math. It takes me a little bit to figure that out. But once I get it down, Sometimes you need a refresher on it. Says cars, if you're doing all windows, no windshield. Well, no back windows. So really on short rolls, you're just using, you're just talking about the sides in that case. You're not talking about a back window. I would have grabbed my, uh, 
my tape measure, but I misplaced it too. So I don't know. It's sitting around here somewhere. I got 3,000 square feet of space to lose something. So it's somewhere. Eight cars if you're doing just the four doors. That makes more sense to me. Because at first 16 sounded like a lot. For front doors, because that's where really short rolls, that's where they, they're the biggest benefit to me is I, I knock out front doors with them. Your margins with film, it's great. The, the, it's the skill that you sell. The skill along with the film that you sell. So that's with color stable that we were talking about. Carbon and ceramic, they go up in price. And then you definitely want to make better margins on that stuff too if you're going to be offering a better film or else what are you doing? So, but with a company, it's like there's material costs, there's space, there's time, and then there's the skill. So there's a whole bunch of things that go into it. Took me, took me 12 attempts on the rear due to a ton of static. Yep, that's uh, some of these unspoken problems. Some films, they have a lot of static. Some films curl a lot. Some films have weird colors. Um, there's just a whole bunch. It, it can't be summed up as simply as just, this film is this cost, it's dyed, has a lifetime warranty. This film is this price, it has a lifetime warranty. Like there's way more than that. How do I reduce static? I'd get a different film. We, I dealt with that on ASWF, we just switched. There wasn't, there wasn't like anything that you could do. Cause sometimes when you go to peel a liner, so like, here I'll show you right here. A good, good counter example to this was the uh, transition film that gave me a whole lot of problems trying to even cut out and install. So as you notice, this film lays pretty flat on the glass. And then when I pull this liner, look, my film, it's not curling in on me. I used to install a couple of films. Oh God, they were like a poster. As soon as you pull that liner, they just go curl in on themselves. See how this is just laying flat like that? Maybe a slight curl there. That's all you, that's it. That's what you need. Then when I, because I even experienced that with like Lumar. There were times I was installing ATC and they just had bad runs of film and they would ruin my day. Thin films that want to roll on themselves. Yeah, they're bad. Any film that wants to roll on itself. As soon as you pull that liner and that thing goes, oh, it's done. You just, it just put a bunch of dirt all over the glue. That's it. You're done. Sorry. <laughs> so like some of these films that you just hear me talk about a couple major things like the haze and stuff. I mean, when I actually play around with them, there's usually something else that I find that I, I wouldn't know unless I played with that particular film. But I don't know. And even, even besides how difficult is the film to work with, you have company support. You have stocking issues. Um, if they sent you the wrong roll, how long is it gonna take them to accommodate for it? Like all those little things add up as a business. That's why I'm saying these prices, they're negligible. If you're running a good business, they're just, it's how many, how, how quick can I get my film? And is it gonna be good for my customers? And is it relatively user friendly? And is it, gonna, is it gonna look good? Is it gonna last? Like all those things and then, okay, you gotta plan for the worst. If something actually does happen, what are they gonna do? 
Everybody's got a lifetime warranty, but what does that lifetime warranty actually mean under that company? There's so many of them that'll just brush you off. I hated the last three to four feet of Lumar. They'd leave impressions. Yeah, I've seen that too with a number of other films. Definitely not just Lumar. Um, Geo, sometimes, sometimes towards the end, I'll have it. Um, some companies will also roll just a few feet extra, not even tell you. So when you get to that very end, they'll actually have given you like 104 or 105 feet to compensate for something like that. But yeah, there's, there's some definitely that can be pretty sketchy towards the end. Can you let me know what I did wrong? I was trying to heat shrink film on a very curved window and I could heat up a finger without creasing it and not settling down, like heating it up made no change. Uh, what film? I swear to God, if you tell me Lexan, don't tell me that. <laughs> But I am curious. I asked them before and they say they don't. Yeah, I didn't think so. I know Avery was doing that. That was kind of nice. But with, uh, with Geo, the impressions toward the ends are pretty mild. But sometimes you do get that. I speak pretty fairly about them. So if, you know, just got used to it from a lot, of, a lot of other ones. I don't think they do anything better on that, but I haven't really had much. <sighs> I need to get just this little piece. It tore. Ugh. What do I have? What can I use that'll just grab that little bit? I'm by no means a pro. This is my first time. Yeah. Why not? Oh, why not, Lexan? It might have been. Oh, I missed that. <laughs> Was it really? Was it actually? Just had to redo a window uh, imperfection in GeoShield. What'd you find? I think I've found something in every film that I've used. I found a B in one of my windows. That was kind of funny. It wasn't from Geo, but that was like, I think that was an Avery one. Yeah, well, yeah, is that bad? <laughs> Sorry, okay. People wonder, people wonder why I harp on it. Um, Lexin is not very user-friendly for shrinking. There comes a point where the very beginning is really easy to shrink, and then the farther you go, the more difficult it is. You gotta put a lot more heat down to shrink it. So where the films that I use are generally pretty smooth and pretty quick, um, you can get that out of a lot of other dyed films and other professional films, and just other films in general. But there comes this point with like Lexan's carbon. I would again, I wouldn't have known unless I played around with it. Where you get about, you get past the first quarter and you get onto the second quarter, and then it's like you gotta really hammer down on the heat to get that stuff to shrink. It just doesn't shrink very easily. So when somebody like yourself is first learning how to tint, and then you save some money with that film, that's what drives me a little bit crazy is because it's like there's so many people that recommend it. But I don't think it's a great film to start out with. If you want to use it, that's it's your own thing, but... What GeoShield tint are you using? We're using the Pro Classic right now. So this is Color Stable Dyed. I don't even heat when I tint on my car. <laughs> 
Well, the windows are curved and the film is flat. You need that film to fit the curve. So when you go to especially a back window, you're either cutting it into lots of little strips or you're just not getting that film to lay down flat. Could you give me a better recommendation? Yeah, Tint Depot. There's a whole list of film recommendations there too. Stuff that I would practice with over, uh, over that. How long have you had your business? Um, I've had Detroit Tint Studio since last year, March. That's when we started this. But I've been tinting and using this film for longer than that. Chat knows when I started, though. At least some people do. Um, how do you deal with Windows dot matrix? Oh, you just cut the film tight. Cut the film tight. And uh, the dots are, they're still going to stick out. Not much you can do on that one. SunTech? Uh, not much. Not much at all. Uh, we had like a few older rolls. We had their uh, standard, which was definitely green. Um, and I want to say we had a couple of other ones. Like we collected samples for quite a long time. There's, you know, when you're in business for like five years, five plus years, it's just, they, lots of film companies just eventually forward you a sample and like, hey, uh, let us know if you want to use it. But yeah, they're under the Eastman. Eastman umbrella, closely associated with Luma. I get way more questions about SunTech than Lumar, though, interestingly enough. I don't know why that is. It's like, they're kind of just like the same. Like, they're probably different looks to like the film, but I tried, what was that? I tried the CXP, film was okay. Scratches if you look at it funny. <laughs> I've, if there's one major problem that I've heard about Lumar and SunTech is their scratch coats. Um, I liked ACC. I think it was one of the best installing films. That was Lumar. Um, it was super easy to work with. Very easy shrinking film. Was very happy with that film. But that's like on the lower end of the food chain. Still exp Wow, my voice just went ham. <laughs> like when I started tinting. The, uh... What was it? Yeah, Lumar ATC is still expensive for a color-stable dyed film, though. All their films are, like, higher compared to a lot of other major brands. And then people buy them and charge piss poor prices for them. I don't understand it, but they do. Something about being Lumar. Um, um, What's up, first live stream? Welcome. Is SunCheck junk? I wouldn't call it junk. It's just got a very sensitive scratch coat, so you, that, that'll drive you crazy. Films that scratch really easy when you're trying to install them, you know, because you, you need something uh, for the sides, so I'm, I'm assuming a, uh, a triage isn't gonna work for you as well. So that's where something like do I not have one in my pouch? Oh wow, usually I have one on hand. I just changed from 3M to SunTech from 3M? No, I wouldn't call it a mistake. Um, that's just the only problem that I've had. If, you get, if you're like the film and it's going well for you, then, then you're doing okay. They're good, I think they're a solid company. They'll take care of you. 
It's just some people have a lot of problems with the scratch code on that. Um, why do they sell dyed film if it changes colors or fades? Because they get your money. That's the goal. They want to get your money, and they want to do that as cheap as possible. So if they can, this is, this is the thing about the, the tint world, man. A lot of it, it all looks the same or similar, or it's tint. It goes on a car, right? So how cheap can I make this stuff? So what happens is they get your money. You install a bunch of the film. Then you have issues with it years down the road. And at that point, what they tell you is, uh, oh, oh, that was our old run of film. The new stuff is, is better. <laughs> and they just keep saying the same thing every two or three years. So you can have a cheap film, and it can look just as good as a high-end job. It can. Then the question is, how is it, how long is it going to last? Don't waste that film. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it'll probably get wasted. Saving small scraps, I just, they, they, go, they sit around for a little bit and then I forget what they are and then I throw them out anyways. I feel interested in window tinting, but looking up average salaries, it comes off less high than expected. I, I assume you own your business with it. That makes much better wage. Um, I'm 40K is the average. I guess that maybe makes sense. I think that's for the less ambitious people. There's so many ways you can do your business, OK? Um, when I was doing mobile tinting for a company, um, I would make about, like, I think at the, on average, it was, like, 75. Um, the highest one year was 90, 91, 92. Uh, that was purely mobile. So it was, uh, it was definitely better than that uh, when, you, when you go direct to you, too, as well, so just depends on how you run your business. If you just want to be an employee at a tent shop, I guess you can make that. I think you can probably make more, but it depends on the shop. Got to be ambitious, man. You got to go get it. That's good to know. Figured it was far off. Yeah, that's kind of like the real world take on it. I've I've talked to, like ugh, man. When I go in like, when I go in like mechanic shops, that's where it was really sad. It's because they're like, ugh, they're just, they're working hard, man. And there's just like, where's the money? They're, they're doing remote starters. Takes like a couple hours to do a remote start. Customer pays a couple hundred bucks for the remote starter. The shop's got to get theirs. There's far more material costs in a remote start and the bypass and all of that. And then somebody's got to make hourly on top. Uh, it's just, yeah. Yeah, tenors, you can make $100 in an hour. You can make far more than that. Um, a lot of it comes down to how efficient you are and where you're, like, really where your jobs are priced at. But yeah, you can make you can make good money. The the question after that is like how consistent can you pull in those jobs? So like my dad's shop, oh man, he would just keep you busy all day long. <laughs> A lot of the time. It was just car after car after car. They're lower priced, higher production shop. Their prices aren't aren't bad. They're just not the highest around, but they're more on production, like higher production. So they're just, they have a small team of people, and then they're just, it's the revolving door. 
Cars in and out all day. You should do over 50K even if you work for somebody. Yeah, the problem is uh, sometimes you get into, this is, this is me. Some shops probably aren't gonna like me for saying this. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't. Tinning for tint shops. Not always, not always the best uh, for personal income, but there's other benefits that can come along with it. So it's uh, it's tough because when tint is their main business, they need to make their cut off a of tint. When you go into another company and tint isn't their main business, well, now they don't need to make they don't worry about tint as much. They try and keep you busy. You make a better cut if you negotiated right. And then it's just less stress across the board. But flip side is they don't care about tint as much. So sometimes those shops can be really lazy and you go into tint something and then there just won't be work for you. So it was mobile, I'd, I'd gear more towards glass shops and stuff like that. But anyways, um, just did my first job with the glass aid. I tell you, the glass aid is the best. Aw, thank you. I'm glad you liked it. That means a lot. So when I first released it, I was like, I don't know how people are actually going to even like this. I like it, but it was very, very different from any way anybody was doing these. If you put 35 over factory, 70, what would that come out to? What does that come out to? You would think I'd have that at the top of my head. I honestly, not 100% sure. Probably, probably like 30. 28 to 30%. Get a meter, put a swatch over. You can do the math, but sometimes the math doesn't just line up one to one. Awesome work, thank you. The black limo looks good. Yeah, yeah, this is looking real good. Mass says 24.5, but I say closer to 30. Yeah, that's what's weird about it. I don't know. You can, you can take a percentage of a percentage, but it never lines up exactly the same. Um, I work at, a, at three dealerships, contract let out, and I'm slightly above the labor price. 45 for two windows, 65 full car, all materials provided. How should I raise my prices? How often? Wait, you sent a full car for two windows, 60, 45 for two windows, 65 full car. You're 65 for a full car? Like no windshield, I'm assuming? 65 for a full car? And you provide the materials? I charge a hundred bucks for two doors and I provide the materials. <laughs> Ouch. Your material cost is taking a significant chunk out of that. Dealerships suck, man. Not all of them. Some of them do. Some of them, most, most of them suck pretty bad. They provide the materials. All, oh, all materials provided. Them providing materials. Uh, so you say 45 for two windows, 65 for a full car. So there's only a 25 or $20 difference between a full car and two doors? Ouch. 
out. Well, I come in and do the cars off of Lumar's program. Sounds like a permaplate type of situation. <laughs> um, you're shooting yourself in the foot pretty hard there. Uh, it's good that you're making like consistent money. Uh, you've got a whole lot. Like a joke in the industry is $100 tint jobs. You're doing them for 65. You could easily do them for 100, pay for your own materials, and basically make more money just by doing that. You got a lot of you got a lot of room to to go up. But yeah, that's uh Like on the, on the one hand, if you look at it like a regular job, you're making decent money. In the tinting world, you got you got a long way that you can go up from. You got a yeah, you got a lot of room there. I don't understand the twenty dollar difference from a full car, especially. That's not even equal, like you're better off just doing front doors all day than ever touching a full car. Um, how did you learn? Did you teach yourself? No, I. so I don't think I would be in the tinting business if it wasn't for my dad's company. It's nothing I looked into getting into. It was just the right circumstances. So, he had an auto accessories company called Ameristar, and I was in high school at the time, and during the summer, I'd work there as a car detailer, and then I was slowly getting into some of the other things, so I was buying some tools, learning how to do, like, step bars. This was uh, 2000, this is like, anywhere from 2000 and five, six, seven, somewhere in there, right before the housing market crash. So those accessories were still really popular. People were still getting a lot of radios for their cars, uh, remote starters. Uh, that was a, a big money maker in the winter time. Because if you don't have a remote starter, even now, what are you doing? But now they're so integrated that that business just doesn't make as much sense anymore. So we had a window tinner, and the dude was just a hurricane of window tint. He was fast. He was real fast. It was just a, literally like a typhoon of window tint just swirling all around him. He'd do like eight full cars in a day. And then it would all be on the ground around him, and he'd just... Big broom, just scoop it up at the end and throw it all away for all the scraps and stuff. Dude, he was just—he was just a tinting monster. And uh, he got scooped up by another company um, that was literally right across the parking lot. Bigger company, Mickey Shore. They still have a fair amount of stores. They're owned by uh, ABC Warehouse. And uh, and so they asked me if I whoa super chat. Thank you for that. I'm going Devin to take super chat at four dollars and ninety nine cents. Any tips on preventing Devin. creases on big pieces like the rear window and front windshield? Do I have any tips? I will get to that in just a second. Yeah, so like I said earlier, um, the, that guy quit over the weekend, got scooped up by another company. Then uh, they brought in uh, his business partner's son 
who taught himself a lot about tinning. Um, he learned from a guy for a couple of weeks and then learned the rest on his own. I learned a lot under that guy and then anybody else I was working with since. So, long road. But Devin, any tips on preventing creases on big pieces like the rear window and the front windshield? Yes, absolutely. So, uh, we, sorry I didn't talk too much about that back glass. Um, if you go to the channel, one second. Your channel. Can I, how do we do this? Um, toolbox desktop. This? No, this one. Yay. So this video, what do we, we go here? This back window is right here. So I'm going to drop that link in chat for you. Watch this video and any other charger ones that I did. Um, but a lot of back window videos. They're super helpful. That's a good one. That's a really good one to watch. So I didn't talk about it. I didn't talk about it so much on this one, but this is that back window, and it's a more difficult back window for sure. Cool, we want to keep our knife. Oh yeah, I gotta get my chat back up. CK Wraps has amazing tutorials on tinting headlights and taillights. Yeah, I've come across this channel. Very different from uh, from window tinting, but yeah, if you have wrap questions, taillight tinting questions, that's a good place to go. We're gonna buy a good tint. My tint stuff? Oh, wait, no. No! Tint stuff. Sun distributed. Tint depot. <laughs> you know, I should just have something that says the big three, and then it pops up all three links. I dropped some links in chat for you. CK shills for ch Chinese junk vinyl. I thought he was mostly using like, I saw some of his, I saw some of his, uh, his videos had Avery? I thought they had Avery, or Vivid. No, he was a big Vivid guy, wasn't he? Is there a problem with Vivid? I don't, I'm not a vinyl guy, but I hear of Vivid and Avery and 3M. Those are probably like the top three that I hear of. Oh, and Hexus. He uses Vivid. Yeah, I thought so. Here we go. Sorry, I was trying to listen to some of the Vivid talk. Vivid's okay? Some people say Vivid's good? Well, that's good. Doesn't sound like a shill then. Um, no, I don't have any classes yet. It's something I perpetually say that I'm going to, and then I don't. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm, like, I fully expected more of a slowdown. There's, like, this ever-trailing business that keeps me busy right now. And so it's just like, okay, when it gets slow, we'll do this. And then it just doesn't get slow. And it's kind of funny how that, that keeps going. But it very well could just be around the corner, so. I take a class even though I know how to tint. Classes are watching anybody, like, spoilers, I spoil a lot of what I would do in a class just on this, so. Whenever, if you, if you only saw videos of me and then you came in and saw how I do things, you would definitely learn some stuff. 
just different from what you normally do, but everything that I do is pretty much wide out there to see, so I don't think you, if you know what you're looking for, you're not learning anything new. <laughs> but I appreciate that you'd still take one. I'd take a class just to meet you. <laughs> Thanks, man. I've run, I, I've been a part of a couple classes. I did my, my own handful of years ago. Um, a couple, they'd been tinning for like, I don't know, they said like four or five years. And there was a whole bunch of little things that immediately helped speed them up. Oh, no, no, no. They were tinning for a couple years, and it would take them four to five hours per car together. And that... That, I think, is like my sweet spot there. If you can kind of tint, I can speed you up by a whole bunch. There's just lots of little things that people do that they don't need to do. And when you see that in person, it just like, oh, shit. The tint competitions were cool to watch. Yeah, those are hugely beneficial just to watch different styles. Every, it's, it seems like everybody has a different way to tint windows. There was a, I, I don't know, I kind of want to look up some other tinting videos as a dedicated video on the channel and just almost like a react video to some of it because I was surprised. <laughs> there was a few notable channels that had some uh, really sketchy tint videos. <laughs> Probably a dumb question, but how are you getting the? F how do you know you're getting the film hot enough? Uh, watch some of my shrinking videos. So you're literally watching the film smooth out. So. You know it's getting hot when it starts to just like pull sideways and then you just shh, and it starts to lay down, starts to stretch out this way a little bit. Because that's what you're doing when you're shrinking is like, well, it's not stretching out this way. What it's doing is you're f all the fingers are going up and down and you, they're basically, you're getting them to pull together and then it looks kind of like little sideways lines, little sideways waves. And if those are pulled together enough, then all the film just kind of lays down. Let's see, we need this guy. And we need a clay bar for this. We're gonna have to turn on the car for this back window because of these defrosters. I say this only every time we ever go to do one of these. <laughs> Is Tint Depot carbon good? Yes. Yeah, I rag on them a little bit. I like them. They, they have reverse branding. <laughs> they put the Tint Depot name over, over good films. I don't know how much I can say about them. They're, uh, yeah, I don't know. So there's territories, I, I can say this. So there's territories with selling window film. So like, as long as you don't say you're selling a particular film, you can label it whatever you want, and then you can sell it in whatever territory is outside your own. So like when you're a distributor uh, under, let's see, they don't do it anymore, but I'm gonna use Lumar as an example. Lumar back in the day, uh, and there's still a lot of companies that do this, but Lumar is one that I knew. Um, Lumar had only private dealers, and they had a, um, fair amount, a uh, fair amount of those, and they would give them all territories. So, like, if you got a lead from somebody that was in Colorado, but you're over in Ohio, you need to hand that lead off to somebody else. So you can only sell to these territories around you. So it limits your business some. So, what happens if you start getting a significant, a call, significant amount of calls from out of state? Well. I mean, you can maybe create an, an online business that maybe sells that film to more outside of your own territories, but it can't be called that, or else you get your dealer license pulled. 
or a distributor license or whatever. It's in violation. I'm not saying that's what they do, but uh, you know, there might be some of that. There was definitely some of that with Lumar. <laughs> but then Lumar went totally uh, corporate. They got rid of all their private distributors. They went 100% corporate. You know, these are the defroster lines that never disappoint. Have you ever wondered why I use a clay bar on defroster lines? It's not not just to help with the peanut problem. It's because of that. That right there. Like, cool. And now, oh God, that's why I use those. What is that? I don't know. But we take it off. Not on his brand new Challenger. Charger, Charger, it's a Charger. It's not Challenger. <sighs> what do you recommend for a dash cover? For a windshield? <laughs> it's a, that's a good question. Do you have it running? Not yet. We'll do it in a minute. I should have already, but I sat here and started cleaning it, so we'll we'll turn it on in a sec. Thank you for having my back on that one. Oh, do they do it? Oh, they do. Those sons of bitches. Dang it. How did I not see it? I gotta grab another tool here, too. Um, the Soak Shield products are really good. Okay, let me turn, let me turn this on. Good Lord. That just sounds upset. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. So what we're gonna do, is now we're gonna clean this. Did we turn it on? Yes we, yes we did. No we didn't, yes we did. Off, oh, rear. I have to turn on your defrosters. I have to turn on the rear defroster so that's why the car's on. We're not just joyriding it. <laughs> So, for these types of defroster lines, they have uh, an air pocket problem. They're thicker defroster lines, they will let lots of air back in, and then you'll just be trying to shrink them out, get rid of them for like a good half hour to an hour after you've tinted the back window, and it's not going to look very nice. So turning on the defrosters and then cleaning your back window is a really good way to take care of that problem. He came out fast. <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're uh, we're leaving it on strictly for that part. There we go. And now, as that back window is sitting there with the frosters on, it's getting hot. So for whatever reason, doing it before you go to install the film will help a lot. Doing it after the fact uh, will often make it worse. So, it's a good fix for these. I've been doing it for quite a long time. And on one like this, I just noticed 
Um, I thought they got rid of it. I just didn't notice it until I had the film, basically, or I was cleaning out the inside. They raise up this rear deck about two inches higher than it needs to be, and they have the same back window. They only do this on like the Hellcats. All the other ones are, are pretty easy to get to on the bottom edge, so it just adds a level of difficulty to this one. Makes it not, not as fun. So I want to make sure that I get this close. I don't know how far I have to push it down. It's easier when you can see it. I think we're pretty much down. Usually I look for this top edge. Oh yeah. <laughs> the Challengers have a rubber strip at the bottom. Yeah, somebody helped me fix that too. You can, uh, lower the back seats and there's the deck a couple of push pins pop those out the deck will the rear deck will slide back and then it'll give you all the space that you need to on those I didn't know that for a long time ah, there we go So that's kind of normally where the back window would stop on a regular charger, is like right at the bottom of that deck. On this one, unfortunately, no, it keeps going. So this guy, the uh, tail fin, yeah, we had a nice talk about that before. Tail fin should help a lot in fixing that. Let me get this cleaned off and we'll see where we're at. It's a big window. Oh, bother. Hang on. Let me make sure I get this done. Would you cover the third brake light? Um, I would, but we have to figure something else out for it. There's like... Did we do this before? You gotta remove something in order to get to it. So if it's got a nice smooth cutout for it with a dot matrix, then I'll just cut around it. If it doesn't, then we'll cover it. So these ones, I've just been so used to cutting them around them for that reason. But yeah, if it's, if it's gonna be a concern, we can figure something out for it. All right. Let me, where's the, there we go. Now we don't need it on anymore. Let's go check this out. Isaac Nichols super, super chatted super. $2. How do you deal with air pockets on edge of window? Isaac, 
Isaac with the, what was that? With the two? Thank you. How do you deal with air pockets on the edge of window? Can you specify? You mean, I'm assuming you mean like the side edges? So on these ones, if we didn't have these defrosters on beforehand, what'll start to happen is as this dries out, water or air feeds back in, and then it'll hit a spot and start to balloon, like side edges. So a lot of it comes down to your insulation. Thank you for the two, I appreciate it. it that's really what it mostly comes down to. Uh, how do you deal with air pockets on the edges of windows? Yeah. So we have a handful of videos on the channel that talk about installing uh, door windows. So there's a lot of like long format live streams. And then mixed in there, I do have quicker or a shorter, basically broken down versions of that. So a lot of it, we kind of, we're past the doors right now, unfortunately, but it, it really has to do with your installation. You gotta make sure that edge is flat Tape your side seals, that's another thing that you can do to kind of help out with it. But the more you fight with the pattern when you're trying to install it, the more issues they are going to pop up. So, that is definitely... Whew. Looking good. Okay, we just got a couple little ones right there. And then, it's hard to get down in that space. So much fun. Yay! That's looking good. And all down here. That's why I like that tail fin. Because this edge right here, you get a smoother edge on this. And then you can, it'll form to that curve down there a lot better and sweep out any issues as long as they're not, not all tried into the film. Ever thought of time, time stamping? Eh, it takes too long for me to do. If somebody wants to go through and do it in the comments, they're more than welcome to. I, it's gonna take me too long to do it after the fact. But I can break a video down after the fact and post it as something. Like, that's what I was doing for a little bit. So I keep a look, I thought we were gonna do one today but we just didn't have as much time for it. I wanna revisit how much soap I need to put in a spray tank. We'll make a better video from it. Whew. Whew. Very good. Happy with this one. So let's clean this stuff out, and then we'll set up the windshield, and we're going to do 35 on the windshield. Now you can see how sick that looks. <laughs> yeah, man. Pick everything out. Tinting isn't a side hustle. Oh, it can be. Ceramic? Uh, no, we're doing we're doing our standard. There's that. And oh, I need a bottle of water. kicked out. That's okay. 
I made all my own communities myself, so it felt good. <laughs> Not gonna hurt my feelings that way. <laughs> yeah, climbing in and out of this back window, trying to get everything pressed out along the bottom, that's gonna be the, like one of the most annoying parts about this one in particular because of that, that edge that they have. Let me grab, I got it over there, fine. I'll walk over here. When will you have Apex in? Uh, they said they're overnighting me the rest because there was a problem with shipping. Canon. But we'll have it soon enough. Uh, I have the 20% though. I put it on a heat lamp. It's good. GoPro. Um, easiest way to get rid of baked on tint slash glue from a back window? Um, we have a handful of removal videos. The easiest way is going to be get yourself a steamer and get yourself an uh, awesome adhesive remover because First part is steaming the film off. Second part is scrubbing the glue off. Look at that. He's got the tag on the seat. That's sweet. That's like leaving a sticker on your hat. What's Apex? Oh, that's, so that's gonna be Geo's top of the line uh, ceramic. So if you guys thought Pro Nano was good, Apex is going to be better. But it's also going to cost more, too. So we're on a normal ceramic job on all the sides in the back. We do those for like $450. Um, I don't know, it's going to have to be like $700, something like that. Oh, God, we forgot to prep this. I got distracted with the back window. That's fine. We'll get this going quick. If you've been titting for a long time, getting in the back seat and getting that film in there, you have a lot of practice with it. But I tell you, I, I hurt my back doing windshields not too long ago, and it was, it was, every windshield I did, it hurt for like a good solid like week and a half. It was super annoying. <laughs> 700, that better have my car feeling like winter in the summertime. <laughs> it's a 95 IR rejection where the regular, so the main difference from one ceramic to the next is gonna be how much IR it blocks out. So there's definitely more to it than just that number. There's how clear is your film, what is the tone of the film, the warranty behind it, so V-Nano versus Pro-Nano, V-Nano is a more economical ceramic. So it's got like a five-year warranty and I've never seen it in person. So I don't know if there's like, I'd assume there's probably like a little bit more haze, but like I said, I've, I haven't used it. It just had a five-year and I'm just, it's lifetime or nothing. So I've always carried Pro-Nano and carbon. And then up from there, now they have a 95% IR blocking film called Apex. So I think one of the most popular ones people were asking me about was like XR Plus. 
that's what they're aiming for on that film. So if you were, if you were looking for a super ceramic, that's, that's who that's for. No, we're not doing five on the windshield, we're doing 35. I know I said in the title, but it's not the windshield. <sighs> kind of wish I spent the extra money to get Pro Nano instead of V. Yeah, that's why I, I, I didn't even look at it, but V Nano wasn't around when I was looking at Pro Nano. You can order a sample from them, though, I think. Yeah, they have a sample program. It's not free, but they'll credit. I think the way they do it is they charge you for a sample, but they'll credit like a real purchase after that. They just want to make sure people aren't looking for free film for the weekends, because there might be a few of those people on YouTube. What PSI do you fill your tank keg to? Uh, right now it's 65. Um, but I would regularly do 75 to like 85. I don't think I quite went to like 90 and stuff. Um, I was filling that five gallon for a while and that would take a little bit off of the air compressor that I was using. But that three gallon, that fills up much quicker where it'll hit 65, like within, I don't know, I'll walk away for like 30 seconds and it'll be full. That's if you're just using a little wimpy air compressor though. Bigger one, bigger shop air compressor, it'll fill up in a couple of seconds. What do you think about 3M color stable? Uh, it would, I don't know if it still is, but when I used it, it was blue, it was very blue. Didn't match factory windows for shit. So we'd have people asking for <laughs> front two to match, and I was like, mm, not that film. Uh, it was really expensive, and I don't, I don't understand why, just other than 3M. So if you wanted like the 3M bragging rights, then you can get that film. Otherwise, it's not doing anything more for you. All right. So we're gonna let that sit just for a minute here. Um, we'll take a heat gun and speed it up a little bit. Was that bounce? No, that was snuggles with the bear. So we prepped the back window and then immediately afterwards, what you want to do is prep the windshield too. <laughs> Why do Charger and Challenger people always want limo tint? Because it's an aggressive car. It's just, this is like a, this is a sporty, cool, FU type of car. So a lot of people like to go with a tint job to match that. Have you burned the floor with a heat gun? No. A long time ago, I've like accidentally burned my foot. <laughs> or I've melted a, melted the extension cord. You put the, like I always shut it off, but you put the end on there by mistake. Will you tint cracked windshields? Sure. If you want to pay me to do it. I have no problem with that. That's your problem, not mine. Chipped windshields, cracked windshields, sure. I would recommend you get it replaced. That's about as much as I can do. If you're gonna come here and you're gonna throw some money at me to do it, shit, it's not my car.
Would you do five on the windshield? See, that's that's where I have uh, I have my limits. I I don't do anything darker than thirty five. Very rarely have I done anything darker than thirty five on windshields. I think there's some unwanted company liability. So limo on the front doors is one of those things where it's like, I definitely don't normally suggest doing limo on front doors either. Maybe we have them sign a waiver. Yeah, just get a lawyer to write it up though. Um, now you can see behind the curtain a little bit. We need 35. So that would be this guy right here, right? Yes. Oh, no, not this one. Okay, where's my th actual 35? Is it not this one? No, it's not this one either. I do this, I do this to myself. I gotta throw this out, right? We gotta find a place for that. It might be over there. Or I'm opening a brand new roll. I think I put it over here. So this is Apex right here because it says Apex. So that's their 20%. I opened the short roll and I put it on the heat lamp earlier just so I could have a sneak peek of it. Where is my 35? What's up? Yeah, it's turning out good. I gotta grab, uh, looking from a 35. But the rest of it's all done. Sides and, sides and back glass. I gotta step over here. Yeah, we had to start it up uh, to turn on those rear defrosters because it helps with tinning it, but it's got a hell of a sound to it. <laughs> oh yeah, really? Nice, very nice. Um, let me see. Mm-hmm, got the full windshield left and then you'll be all set. All right, this one, we're gonna be opening this guy. Is that my boss? <laughs> no, that's the client for this car. Is that the owner? <laughs> Does he have that owner vibe to him? <laughs> He's been waiting this whole time patiently for this to get done. Um, will Dawn mess up the panels? Um, any baby shampoo or soaps, they can leave streaks behind. Uh, I would wipe them off kind of as you go. So I tinted for a very long time without covering most panels up. Um, and usually the most I would see was some soapy streaks left behind. So they're kind of like lighter white soapy streaks. Um, but just wet a, uh, wet a towel and wipe them back off. They'll come off. The other thing though, is when you get to paneling like this, sometimes you have like a suede and the insert or you have stitching. And with the stitching, you can have swelling on the paneling. So I would definitely tape those off and cover them up really as soon as water hits it. There's not much you can do. Some people notice the swelling and some people don't. But it's on the rams. So be careful. Why did you throw all that film away? When we're getting into windshields, that tape, usually it's fine. They use a nice clean release painter's tape. Um, the roll is in transit, so it's kind of like twisting a little bit. So what I don't want is on the most expensive window of the car, is there to be a little impression or something from that tape. So most of the time, you're totally fine. But there is that chance that the tape might have twisted in a little way, especially when you're pulling it off too, that it might have left like some small impression on the film. I don't want that in my film. 
So take the first few feet or first foot really, and you can cut it off and throw away. That's up to you. That's a, that's a personal decision when we're going into the windshield on this. Because like, I mean, what would be more frustrating? Not have, like doing that, knowing I lose a little bit of film, or not doing that, and then having to redo the entire windshield, potentially. You Android or iPhone? Right now, Android. iPhone got really boring. Actually, I've been on Android ever since the S8 came out. I was on iPhone for a long time. There were just a lot of little things. It's like a, so the same thing happens with, with a handful. Uh, a handful of other things too. So like Apple versus Android, it's like there's more flexibility with Android, but sometimes things are a little bit more refined. On an iPhone? So like <laughs> Canon versus Sony cameras, same thing. Canon's kind of the Apple of the camera world where they seem like they're behind on some features and Sony is constantly pushing the limits, but for a long time Canon just what they did, they did very well and had it nailed down. What car can't you tint? Um... Really when it comes down to like classic cars, I just would rather not do them. I don't feel like I'm, I don't really feel like it's worth to do a lot of the times for me. So like, I'm gonna charge basically a full day to do one of those cars and I'm gonna take pretty much a full day to tent one of those cars. And that's kind of a lot to pay for your classic car if you want it done right. So there's a bunch of other shops that are willing to do them for like, you know, <laughs> if they do a full car for 250, sometimes they would charge like 350 for them. And it's like, man, if there's somebody that's gonna do that, just go to them. I'm not gonna touch it for that. So when it gets into unique stuff like that, it's just, it's not in my norm. That's not what I normally do at all. I get a lot of cars like this, newer, um, just newer, cleaner, not unique old butyl seals and stuff like that. It's just not what I usually get. So struggling through that car for a day when I'm not gonna get a bunch more of those like Tesla's a little bit different. So like with the Model 3s, right? Those would be a little tricky when you first do one, but it's absolutely worth learning because chances are you're gonna get a bunch more of those down the road. So it's just kind of the way, I, I just don't feel the same way about old cars. What's been the most expensive car? Uh, it's not a huge list, really. I've done like a, I've done an R8. I've done, I haven't ever actually tinted a Lambo. I've done a McLaren. I've done uh, Aston. Have you done the Tesla full windshield, like the big one? No, I haven't done that one yet. I did the back window. So what I'm saying is like most of the time a lot of mid-range, nicer cars, but most of them are kind of in that mid-range. That's just, I don't know, that's just been most of my clients and most of what I've been doing over the years.
There's this place over in uh, the Rochester area. Uh, classic appreciation. They're a really nice higher end detailing shop. Uh, we were tinning out there uh, as a mobile company. I think they still take care of them. But there were days you'd get, you'd get pretty nice cars there all day, but you'd get paid the same amount, so it was kind of frustrating because your liability is like way up. Bet you can't tint a Civic X back window. I've tried doing it. Oh, yeah, I can. I got one right there. That makes it way easy. <laughs> I got your Civic hatches covered, no problem. Done a few of them. Used to deliver drinking water to Classic, nice guys. Yeah, they are, they're really nice over there. That place is like, it's really cool. So they got like an aisle in the middle and they have it all split into side rows. So they pull something in, they wash it in the middle, and then they pull it off to the side and they got curtains uh, blocking it off from getting wet. And then that's where they do all their detailing is kind of in the side bays. Have you thought about getting a drone? <laughs> no. I, there's nothing I'm gonna do with a drone. Fly it around for like five minutes, go wee, and then that's gonna be it. I finally got a slider though. I think that's every, uh, that's, or top down. <laughs> a drone would make a, would make a terrible top down camera. It'd be up in the sky for like 10 minutes before it had to be recharged. I haven't been able to really do anything overhead because I have a big uh, diffuser overhead. So I don't want to poke a hole in it or anything. And cars are always like different sizes, slightly different positions, and then vehicle types just changes everything. So if you had a camera pointed at this windshield, you always have to keep moving it for the next one. It just gets annoying. It's an extra thing I have to do. I played around with like some other cameras too. Why didn't you just get a 360 camera? Do what? Because a, uh, yeah, that camera wouldn't make much sense. Yeah, you, so you can you can set up a 360 degree stream. It would just be awful. It's the you, oh, it's just I've seen a couple. It's just terrible. Um, so then it's it's just for editing after the fact. 360 camera wouldn't do anything for the stream. Um, a PTZ cam. We have a couple of those. I don't have any like expensive PTZ cams, but I, I've got one that's really smart. Here, I'll show you real quick. Um, toolbox. So we got this one. So you can like literally walk around and then this will follow you. GoPro. I've got, I've got four of those. I just don't use them as much. <laughs> I've messed around with quite a few things. Um, I don't, I'm, the most I would do is maybe get like a really expensive PTZ cam, like a couple of them. But even then, I don't know. How does it know what camera to switch to? Because they tell it, they just say the camera. Voice, voice activated. All right, so this guy, we need this guy. So 
So what we're gonna do, somebody asked what dash towel would you use? Um, unfortunately this one. <laughs> this is kind of my, my favorite option right now, but I still wouldn't spend money on it. So this has a, a rope sewn into it, but it's just kind of slowly disintegrating and breaking down. So quality is not quite there. And it's like a hundred some bucks. I have a frameless door, but when I try to lock it by pushing it up, the latch doesn't move. Uh, I need any fixes. Does it have a push button instead of a latch? What kind of frameless? There's a few different types. Most of them are latched, but if you have like an Acura um, or something similar, they'll have a push button. Then you just undo the screw. Where's my, God, what happened to like my 50 side swipes that I had around here? Wow, I don't even know where it is. Two thousand six Eclipse? No, the not the push button car. You're gonna have a button that you have to push to keep those windows up. Oh, there it is. This guy. So check here. Eclipse likely, if the window shifts up and down when you close it, it's not latched. It's got a button. All right, hopefully, wow, don't have a lot of room here. What? Kinda do, I do in this spot. Why do you always look high? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, dude. <laughs> This kind of screwed up my last car. So I did uh, two doors and a windshield on a Tahoe earlier, and I'm trying to make sure this corner gets pressed in there because it screwed it up. Have you tried the Fusion version of the side swipe? No. <laughs> This right here definitely could be a problem. That center spot. Everything else is like getting far enough in. Right here though, there's a lot of pressure right there. Because if that rope doesn't give you anywhere to go, oh, man. If that, rope, if that rope doesn't give you anywhere to tuck the film, it's gonna bunch up against there. So we're just gonna try and sneak this down here a little bit farther. Probably just bunched up a little bit. There we go, that's better. And then this guy. Uh, wow, surprisingly it doesn't seem to have any sensors up here. So I don't usually take mirrors apart. I think I'm gonna leave that. It's probably a twist off. We're gonna leave it alone though. The rams, rams I take off. These ones, mm. chargers, 300s, and some other ones. You just gotta be careful. When you start spraying a bunch of water, when you start spraying a bunch of water around these cars, that's where you gotta be careful. So like the little extra things like the mirrors, you wanna be definitely careful for. 
And then this is a suede material. So we probably can cover that up a little bit better. This is those little things that unfortunately it just takes time, but sometimes it's worth doing because if not, then I get questions of, oh shit, <laughs> all my sides, they're soaked, man, is that gonna be okay? And I don't wanna put that kind of doubt in here, so. Look at that, that's not too hard. Probably need a little piece for down there. Tint license plates? Yes. <laughs> no. Just get a cover. Amazon sold that years ago. Or eBay. <laughs> that was my that was my first question. Getting crazy with the wraps these days? Oh, a little bit. What is that? The, the latch. <laughs> the latch on the Mitsubishi. Yep, yep, push button. You are welcome. Mercedes does that, Infinity. Um, Nissan, I don't know. A lot of like Japanese cars, they t that's what they'll typically do is they'll put a button there instead of doing it on a latch. US does the latch. Um, and then we're gonna go to the other side. Windshield, so fun. So, oh, all our tools are down here. That makes, that makes sense. Hey! Jet 612 Super Chatted chat. $4.99. Haven't seen a charger in a while in my bay. Mainly Camrys, Accords, and American SUV slash trucks lately. Nice to see you rocking, Matt. Aw, thank you for that. It was, uh, it's hard to see through this limo. Thank you. Oh, T Jet with a five. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Yeah, I haven't gotten as many chargers either. I used to get them all the time, and then I just don't see them as much anymore. But when we do get them, it seems to be pretty nice one. I'm trying to stay focused for the rest of this. Well, close enough. All right, we're gonna squeegee this off one more time. We're just gonna go light with it. These things always concern me a little bit. Similar to like the Rams. Is there a difference between pushing and pulling the squeegee? Uh, not with a good squeegee. On the cheap rubber ones, they'll kind of stick a lot. But on the nicer ones, you'll be good. They'll slide either way. There we go.
What's your favorite squeegee for the first pass? I use the same squeegee for the whole installation. I use it for the beginning. I use it for the rest of it. Okay, so there's that. Nice. Now we take this big old squeegee right here. We're gonna squeegee out the outside. We're gonna roll it up. And then if everything goes right, we will have a nicely tinted windshield. So similar to the back window, this one's reasonably curved as well. Just take your time with it. I miss my tiny. Gotta love autocorrect. This channel used to be called Tint Stuff, and then it would always autocorrect to tiny stuff. It was really annoying. Shut up. Stop making fun of me, autocorrect. Okay. We are almost there. That's why we changed it. I couldn't, I just couldn't take it anymore. Woo, look at that. I've been trying to lay the liner back down with like little to no air bubbles. That, I would say, it was a pretty good job of that. Tiny studio. Ah, oh, God, it still got me. It's, in, it's not as offensive. <laughs> um, any ideas on glass aid? Yes, Wednesday. I have a freight shipment coming in that should be here Wednesday. I gotta double check the tracking, but it should be here on Wednesday. Then we should have a mostly full restock. Unfortunately, there's just gonna be a whole heck of a lot of orders and distributors to fulfill too. So once that is mostly out of the way, then I think we'll be pretty much back to normal. But man, it just takes time. I've got like 10,000 10, rolls on order, and it's just slow going now and, and getting them all made. That was as many as I could, I could purchase at the time. That wasn't like, that was as much material as, as existed. It's just supply chain issues right now. That's all it is. That's all it's been this whole time. Nothing but supply chain issues. So once that all gets sorted, um, then we'll be good. <laughs> Digging the green shanks. Oh, thanks, man. All right. This is the scariest part of the whole install for me. This is where I put a whole lot of attention and one little hair can mess up this entire thing and drive me absolutely insane where we got to start over so I do as much as I can to prep for it and uh, we take our time with the install just easy going and as long as it goes pretty smoothly we shouldn't have any issues
So like taking this mirror out would have been very helpful. I know how to take the rams out, so I'm assuming this one is very gonna be like basically the same as that. But the housing looks a little different and I just I know I can do it without removing it, so I didn't just wanna like, hey, let's try and take out his mirror right now. We'll we'll practice on something else. Not this one. Yeah, this is 35, this isn't Limo. The title is a little misleading on this video. Limo everything. <laughs> hey, I gotta do what I can to make it interesting. Most people don't watch long enough. So the number one thing that has helped out with reverse rolls has been getting everything in place as you're unrolling it. It's easier said than done because there's the, there's like the little things. It's usually like the bottom corner, a random spot from, from the towel, or the rope. So as long as I can get everything covered and laid flat, then at this point we should be we should be home free. But like I said, see see how that's bunching up there just a little bit. I can shove my towel and my rope down just a little bit farther in there, and I think I can smooth it out. Whew. I hate that part because that screwed up my windshield earlier today. It was just, it was so annoying. Everything was going fine with it. And it had been a type of windshield I've done a bunch of times. But I just, that, that paneling hit that rope and then it bunched up my film and I was just trying to swipe it down and it put a couple of creases that I just couldn't work out. They were in such a weird spot. And the more I messed with it, the worse it looked. So. I had to pull that one and redo it. But on this one, we are prepared for that. So I hate running back and forth and like trying to make sure the towel is 100% down there because it's just kind of like, ah, I bet I can work around it a little bit. But if you can take the time, make sure everything's out of your way, you'll have that much easier of a time installing it and then you'll save yourself time and frustration in the long run but this is one of those windshields too where you want it as covered up as you can. BCM, anybody ever hear the BCM problems that I've talked about? This is, this is one of those potential cars. Chrysler's Dodge. So like the 300s, Chargers, um, Challengers, and rams, all those had BCM issues. But, so once we get all this down, yay. See, just that little ripple there. Just gotta make sure that towel is for sure out of the way. And then here, Let's just make sure that's all down. Yeah, we gotta cut that off just a little bit. We're slightly wide. Where's my, look like we were. Sometimes they'll change the butyl. Sometimes they're a little sloppy with it on these. I think there's just one point where they are. That should be good. So now, yay. That made a difference. That made a real difference right there. Just a couple little pieces, protect the suede. Nice. 
And then let's finish off that little bottom area right there. And the next stressful part is pulling the rope. As long as the rope pulls clean and doesn't try and yank up my film, I think we'll be pretty good here. I guess we should check it first before we do that, but. Um, tips for a golf V. Uh, kind of just general ones. Leave extra film. Leave extra film on the bottom uh, so you can kind of pull shrink it. They're, t they're tougher back windows. They don't really look like it, but they are. All that film kind of bunches up in those bottom corners on those. Then all the paneling on the inside is kind of tight. That's why I'm scared to tint my RAM windshield. I have a few videos on where it is. If you cover it up, you'll be fine. Just make sure you really cover that area up. Cover up the BCM. Cover up those speaker grills too. That'll help out a bunch. It's just like when you spray a lot of water and then it runs down the wires straight to that BCM. People just aren't careful. They'll put, a, they'll put like a soak shield on the dash, but I think it was still get, water was still getting there through the uh, through like the speaker grills and stuff. I don't know for sure, but ever since I've been doing that, uh, towel's been dry and everything's been okay. Woo! That was fun. Looking good. So let's pull this. So for this, we're going to pull out one of the slipperiest, slimmest tools that I have. That is an easy reach. Now with an easy reach, I used the crap out of these things. Uh, this is before Tri-Edge. Uh, these things are great, but they will wear out quicker and they will scratch your film if you're not careful. So on something like this, what we're doing is sliding this kind of in between the rope portion of the towel on the tight spots and literally holding the film down. Most of it's fine, but then you get into some of these areas. Ooh, right there, right there, it's doing it. Right here, there we go, sweet. Yes. Aha. <laughs> that part is, I'm so over pulling ropes out of corners. I wish there was a better way, but it seems like the best. So that's why we do it that way. Ropes in the corners, like these, it bunches up a lot. See, that's where the pillars start to hit the glass and the rope doesn't really have anywhere to go. So what happens, is everything just kind of bunches into that corner. So you need a little bit of space to make sure everything slides in there nice. Dang. Okay. Hell yeah. Oh, that looks good. Okay, I'm very happy with that. That turned out really good much better than earlier today. I mean, and earlier today wasn't, wasn't an ugly job by any means. <laughs> it's just that corner. And I was trying to save that corner and it wasn't happening. What was that? Legally. Yeah, legality is where you live. There's different limits across which we'll talk about it a little bit, but we don't bring it up a whole bunch because everybody's got different state laws. And then in the state of Michigan, uh, you're free and clear if you have a doctor's note. So I just assume everybody's got a doctor's note. It's like the, uh, like the things that they sell you in an auto parts store. This may or may not be legal in your state. Same thing with window tinting. 
may or may not be legal if you got a doctor's note or not. <laughs> Fifteen percent. Yeah, it varies from state to state by a lot. Florida, Florida is like 30, 30 on front, 15 on back, something like that. Now, where do you put the inspection sticker? We don't have those either. We don't have those ugly stickers taking up our windshields. We don't have to get yearly inspections. You just go to uh, Secretary of State. Brandon Jolly super chatted four dollars and ninety nine cents. Found your channel over the weekend Ooh. and learned a lot. Thank you for live streaming and educating your viewers. Helped me decide what I will buy. Ah, that's super cool. Dang, that's like what we try and do. Uh, Brandon, Brandon with the five. Thank you. I appreciate that. Almost done. Just doing final touch-ups right now. So we'll probably be done in like five minutes. What was that? Found your channel over the weekend, learned a lot. Thank you for live streaming and educating your viewers. Help me decide what to buy. That's really, really cool. Trying to figure out like what film to go with. I mean, there's a lot of misinformation, general misinformation out there. So I appreciate that. Some people, like I've seen things as crazy as like, oh, ceramic looks darker. And it's just like, wait, what, really? <laughs> so that's good to hear. Uh, do you use a heat gun? When freshening up faded trim. Do I use it? What? No, I just use it for the film. Be careful with a heat gun around all the trim, though. I've definitely fried my fair share of trim. Can't beat the video you made about the Walmart tent? <laughs> I'm pretty proud of that video. That was... It was a fun video to do, but to actually have a clear illustration of just like, okay, it, like this is the real problem that I would watch out for with cheaper carbons and ceramic. I got that point across, I think, really well. Scott super Saladino chat. super chatted one dollar. Scott! Scott with a dollar, thank you. Oh, you did have a message. Missed the spot on the dashboard driver's side? We can go look at it, but I don't think so. Thank you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Miss spot on dashboard driver's side. Dashboard. Oh, dashboard. I'm assuming that means like water. Oh, that little guy? Thank you. Scott yes. Saladino super chatted two dollars. Miss spot on Wanna dashboard make sure all that's driver's taken side. Care you were right. We, we, we did miss a spot. I thought you were talking about the tent. See that? That's what we trimmed out of here. That little guy finally decided to fall out of here. Perfect. 
Aha. So we will get this all buttoned up here in just a sec. I just want to make sure everything is pressed out. So we're going along all the sides. Any small imperfections, that's what I'm touching up right now. Put some heat on the glass. Take something like a Take something like a triage. Just knock them down. This looks good. So we're 35 on the windshield. 35, five on everything else, 35 on the windshield. Looks like, let me make sure I got the key out of here. Are all the cars you get this clean? <laughs> no, <laughs> definitely not. But I do appreciate when they are this clean. I always feel bad because they get some soapy water on all the sides, but you can wash that off. Whew. There she is. So we are 5% all the way around with, uh, with 35, 35 on the windshield. Like it? <laughs> it looks mean, man. That looks super cool. That windshield is something I really wanted to spend just a little bit more time on because you're obviously looking through it all the time. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's a trickier windshield to do. So, yeah, man. Turned out sick, though. Whew. Hope it was well worth the wait. Awesome. Yep. Turned out really nice. All right, I'm going to end this live stream, and then I'll cash out. It will be all set. Whew. Cannon. I can go get a car wash right now? Yep. Okay, yep, you can go. Right you can take it straight through a car wash. Yep, just we're going to leave the windows up for a couple of days. Sounds good. Um, and then it'll dry out just like the other one did. That's the thing. Like, I was at my buddy who got his own recently. Uh-huh. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, the film is part of it, and then the majority of it really is in the, is in the skill and the labor behind it. Yeah. I'm going to end this really quick, and then I can cash you out over there. I'm going to say goodbye to my chat. Da -da -da -da. All right, boys. We've come to the end of another stream. Is it over? Yes. Sorry. Uh, i got to take off. Um, we'll be back with another live stream, I think, tomorrow. Um, we're going to shout out some Super Chats really quick, because uh, he's been waiting this whole time for it to get done, but well worth it, I hope. So before I cash him out, uh, thank, big thank you to Scott, Scott, Brandon, T-Jet, Isaac, Devin, Isaac, Devin, Rodney, uh, Jamie, Daniel, Rodney, Daniel, Rodney, Daniel, <laughs> Sergio, uh, Daniel. Thank you guys for the Super Chats. I greatly appreciate it. Um, a whole bunch. Uh, so we will be back, I believe, tomorrow with another one. I'll either be shooting a video or do a live stream. So keep the subscriptions on. And then I just got to take off. Sorry for the quick ending, but we got to do what we got to do. Uh, you guys have a good one. See you later.